How you doing? This is Charlie with Rhino Rack. I'm America's commercialization manager. We're out here at, Rhino, uh, at SEMA launching our new recon platform. Um, new proprietary rack we have using our recon deck bars. Four-way mountability with this product using our Zwiftlock technology. So if you're not familiar with Zwiftlock, um, it's a little, little drop-in nut system we made. This is eyebolts just going to demonstrate how that works. But it gives you the ability to drop in anywhere on our slats and platforms. Uh, you tighten this down and it's going to lock in place without having to have any apertures, openings, without having to have any cutouts on the platforms. We're able to open up a lot more storage space and ease of use with where you can attach your accessories. Um, this new platform, again, launched with the Recon Deck Bar, integrated wind fairing, as you can see over here on the Land Cruiser. Uh, first platforms we launched for are the Land Cruiser and the uh, GX. So look out for that Rhino Rack platform there. You got integrated three side rails, uh, two stage on the outside. You can see the, the glossy fix on the, on the side there. So we've got three stages, thickness gives us a whole lot of lateral strength. The cutout on the side of the bar opens up for you. The gloss, two stage on the outside gives that nice aesthetic appeal. Uh, it rides a lot lower to, this, to the car roof than, than our previous racks. Our bars are mounted in what we call the east-west location, so it op opens up some opportunities for different mounting of our accessories. Again, the integrated wind fairing down low against the roof uh, keeps the air up and over the bars on the top. It's all, all built into the rack. It's not an accessory. It's actually part of the structure of the rack. Gives us more support at the front as well. And uh, we also launching out here our new Max Trax Lite. It's a new board. Comes out from Max Trax. So now we've added to the lineup on top of our MK2s and on top of our extremes. We've got the new light board. Kind of like a spare tire idea. It's, uh, it's there when you need it. This is going to be made out of a, of a lighter weight and a little smaller size than our MK2s and Extremes. It's a lot better for, for uh, most of the cars on the road, gets you out of that tight situation. A lighter duty board for lighter duty use, half the weight and all the adventure as we say. Um, but they give it down in a nice pack size. Two of these can save you a whole lot of tow truck bills if that's what you're uh, in, the, in, the, in the weather for. Um, get you back on the road, keep you safe, get you back on the track without having to take the weight and the expense of the big extreme boards that are used for day in and day out uh, adventures. So on the extreme line, all the way down to the light, full spectrum from Max Trax. Hey, what's up, adventurers? So I'm Tyler here with Charlie from Max Trax, and he just told us about the lights, but I wanted to kind of grill him on the Max Trax boards. I know you guys are like the original for this. That's right. But I also know that you're really expensive compared to like all the options everybody sees on Amazon. What makes these worth the price that's two, three, four times what people are buying the cheap stuff from? Well, once you use the board two, three, four times and it doesn't work anymore, you're gonna wanna pay for something that can be there every time, the dependability, right? So we are the original. Our uh, proprietary components used to make these boards are are used are designed for day in and day out use, right? They're designed to be there when you need it in extreme conditions, to be there to, to get you safely home, to get you safely off the track, to prevent damage to your vehicle, to prevent damage to your gear, uh, so you can keep on going down the road or down the track safely, right? So um, when you need to depend on this board to get you out of the situations that you're in without compromise and without question, the quality behind our board dictates the price behind our board. So if you're looking for something that you can use once or twice if you might need it, maybe you can start stacking up how many dollars and how many times you gotta buy the Amazon boards. Once and done with a lifetime warranty for Max Trax, if you're tough enough to beat this board, we'll replace it for you for free. All right, so lifetime warranty is good. Um, you mentioned earlier, like, there's something about the composite that's unique to you guys. Like, what is it about the plastics that's being used that sets you apart? It's, it's, uh, it's fatigue and wear resistance, right? So you're not gonna see the white lines on these boards. You're not gonna, they're gonna bend. They're gonna conform to the shape of your tire to get you over the ruts and to get you out of the shape. And they're not gonna deform. They're not gonna break down. You're not gonna get the white lines and, there's, and the stress fatigues you're gonna get. Um, and that's just from years of testing since the beginning of Max Tracks. One of the One of the goals was to set out and make sure that board's not gonna fatigue wear into a situation where it can't be used again. All right, okay, and then for the people that leave them on top of their cars, because I keep mine inside because, like, I'm, just, I'm worried about UV damage. Right? Absolutely. Like, can you just leave these out in the sun? Yeah, I mean, they're born in, the, uh, born in the Australian outback. You know, the sun down there doesn't, doesn't yeah, you quit. you got a little bit of sun. Yeah, you got a little yeah. bit of sun in the outback. This is an Australian born and bred company, right? So they do live on the sides and on the roofs of vehicles down there day in and day out. That's the bread and butter from where they're from. So they are UV stable. They are UV protected. Um, frankly, you're gonna, you might see a little bit of, uh, of long-term discoloration, but it doesn't affect the product whatsoever. Like, it, the product is still stable and, and usable no matter how much UV exposure. Okay, that was my next question is like what's the, is there a certain lifespan like after five years replace them or? No, there's there's not a shelf life to these products. Okay. Um, as far as I know the, the originals are still running down, stunt running around down there. Okay. You know the idea behind this was uh, the, the founder pulled a deck, a, a board off of his uh, dock 
and, and came up with the original design, and then he went after the pr pr proprietary uh, polymers. And once he got that dialed in, that was it. We, we made the best board. Very cool. So for the lights, like, yep. what is the use case for this versus like the extreme ones? You know, right. Can I, can I put this on my Overland rig and get by, or should I go with something a little burlier? You can put this on your Overland rig and get by. It is meant for a little bit of a smaller vehicle. Okay. Uh, it, again, it's, it's just a slightly different polymer. Uh, the, the day in and day out, rugged abuse that, that the overlanders are going to see if they're actually out on the tracks and, and getting into it, um, you're going to want to step up, right? It's, just, it's the difference between a, a street all-terrain and you're getting into some mud terrains. Like, what's the terrain you're driving on? What's the experience you're trying to have in your vehicle? How deep into the bush are you going to get? So if we're, if we're handing out campsites and dirt roads and some snowy trails and it's, it's just an adventure for you on the weekend with your dog and skis, Lights are going to get you through in your CUVs and your small SUVs and small pickups. Moving up in weight and vehicle, we have the MK2s, the original board. Uh, those are going to have the teeth of the same polymers and resins. That's going to work on pretty much every vehicle in the street in North America, right? So that's going to be a great board for you as you get a little bit deeper into the woods and a little bit more serious terrain. When you really step it up and you're, you're rock rashing your vehicles and you're getting into some terrain that's, that's forcing your vehicle to work to its limits and you're pushing it and you're moving down tracks that don't want you to move down them, your extremes are going to be coming out. Uh, aluminum teeth, replaceable teeth, so if you happen to damage the teeth, the board has replaceable teeth in it so you can keep this board in service no matter what and how hard you beat on it. Very cool. So is there kind of like beyond like the use case guideline, is there yep. like a vehicle weight guideline? Because these are a lot shorter too. Yep. So And your mini is even shorter than that. as much flex, right? That's correct. So, so uh, um, these are recommended for any passenger vehicle and SUV. It's not an exact weight limit, but basically just think about most of your like Subarus, commuter cars, Bronco sports, smaller vehicles like that, just tipping into the mid-size Tacomas and Colorados and things. Okay. But then after that, you can go from, from any size vehicle, um, but yeah, you will get more flex and you will get more use out of these boards um, with a bigger vehicle. You're going to obviously flex it, but it's not going to hurt the, the components of it, to it. So you could ramp a small vehicle off one of these without much flex, but that F-150 is going to going to cause it to conform. It yeah, going to give it a little something more, right? F-250s and 350s are completely safe on these, but you, again, you're going to see more flex because the vehicle weighs. Do you want to, like, thousand stack thousand. them for something like you that? Can, you can, like absolutely. That? Bridging uh, is not totally recommended, but it happens quite often. But the more you stack, they're, they're all going to nest together and give you some more strength and more more layers to that. So right. two boards to bridge over a, a large, you know, ramp up a rock or a, a log or something like that or get out of a track, 100% usable. Uh, it limits the flex and helps you get a little more drive, up, a little more lift for the vehicle for sure. All right, and then last question, because I know a lot of people, the, the most often use case I actually see for these is leveling a vehicle at a camp. Oh, absolutely. Like, is there any harm in like literally parking, you know, a seven, eight thousand dollar rig on these for 72 hours? Absolutely you know, not. You're there for a while? Nope, or? absolutely not. Okay. Especially, I mean, I've leveled, <laughs> yeah, we've all leveled with them. Yeah. Um, I've leveled with these on a rock because I couldn't get on the rock. So I just put that down and drove up it to get on a rock and sat on top of that with no problem. Um, that, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, they're, when they're stacked together, they nest perfectly. Um, even the MK2s will nest underneath the extremes. So if you happen to mix and match your boards based on your use or your budget, you can still nest them all together. The shorter boards obviously don't nest uh, with the taller boards because it's shorter. But the ramps and shovels on the ends prevent that. But no, no issues at all with keeping it parked. No issues with the sun. Uh, the harder you use it, I just suggest match your terrain and your use to the board. So that way you get the best, best case out of it. All right. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely.